Hi everyone, my name is John Doherty and uh, today I'm going to be making a video around how to get started with Docker and Celery and how to integrate it nicely with your Django project. So the reason why I'm doing this video in the first place is because I'd posted inside the Django community on Reddit uh, what people were looking help with the most in regards to Celery as I know it can be quite a tricky thing sometimes to set up and uh, the result of that kind of thread was that people were wanting to uh, learn more about how to get started with Docker and Celery, people saying how to have the mental block with it, and people want to also just cover some of the basics too as well. Um, but I'm going to be covering Docker and Celery uh, in this video today, and uh, to get started there is this repository called Docker Celery. I'll include a link in the description too for you to get started. You can pull this repository down on your local machine and uh, there's the kind of getting started instructions for you to follow along in this video too if you want to. So I've already got this project on my local machine. I am uh, using PyCharm. Feel free to use any other ID that you want. Some people prefer Visual Studio Code for example and uh, inside the repository is a Django project and inside this Django project is a, it's a Django REST API essentially and the Django project is called Find My Hitman so it's a REST API that allows people to order hits on people and we have a API view called Start New Hit Job and what it does is it calls a salary task called Start New Hit Job I'll show you the salary task now. So the salary task goes to sleep for 10 seconds and then it prints uh, something after the sleep. Um, so I'll just show you a quick demo of this running. So we have, if you go to your uh, Docker Compose file, uh, just make sure whenever you're running this for the first time yourself to run Postgres first and PG Admin after and to set a to set up a database inside the Postgres container called uh, uh, HitmanDB, and the database just needs to your Postgres database just needs to match up with that. So whenever you're logging into PG Admin uh, for the first time, it's going to ask you for a password. Uh, the password is the default password is change me. Um, uh, as you can see here inside the uh, Docker Compose file and uh, that's it there, it's changed me, um, it's fine for local testing purposes. Um, so get that database set up and then you'll be able to run all these containers as well. Uh, so we have uh, a few containers on the go here at the same time. So if you run this REST API container, it will run all the containers inside this Docker Compose file. So Redis is uh, dependent on uh, a couple of containers. So in this scenario, we're using Redis rather than RabbitMQ. Uh, they're both very similar, um, but I'm just using Redis out of uh, personal preference. Um, and I'm also using Postgres as my main database for both Salary and for my Django REST project. And um, so we're going to need a Redis container, we're going to need a Postgres container, and then we're also going to need our Salary Worker container too. And then we're also going to need a container for our Django REST server to run out of as well. And then we also have another thing called Salary Flower. So Salary Flower is more if you are a, an administrator for a salary, uh, a salary cluster and you want to monitor the performance of tasks running and you know, you want to do things like uh, optimize your queues, all that kind of good stuff. That's what Salary Flower helps people out with. Um, but we're going to uh, just do a quick demo of the system working now. So I've started all those Docker containers uh, just by clicking that run button. Uh, you can run it yourself. Um, and I'm going to show a demo of it working. So we have our... Uh, Django REST API and it is asking to enter a target name. I'm going to provide a target name called, I'm just going to say Keanu Reeves or Keanu Keeves. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to say Keanu Reeves. I'm going to click post and you can say, you can see that it says that a job has been created for Keanu Reeves and then 
just a bunch of random letters for testing purposes, which is fine. Um, if we jump into our celery logs, you can see here that it says that the task has been received and it's printed the statement target sorted Keanu Reeves, which we had seen before, target sorted and then Keanu Reeves. And then we see that the task has succeeded and then it provides the number of seconds that it had taken for the task to complete execution. And then we can also see this data inside Celery Flower too. So if I start off another task, click post, I can see in real time the task coming through. So the active is now currently one. After 10 seconds passes, the succeeded column will become six and the active will become zero. And I'll uh, go through that process again. So we can now see active is now zero, the succeeded is now six. And we can see our load average as well for this salary worker too. Um, so salary floor is more for uh, just monitoring the performance of your salary workers and how your uh, queues are getting along. Um, so I just want to cover a few um, a few things before jumping into the Docker containers. Um, if you have a Django project yourself and you're looking to get started with Salary, just one thing I want to note is that uh, you can have a salary.py folder as part of your Django project. And inside the salary PY folder, it will define the configuration. I'll say the, you know, the name of your salary app and any other, you know, configuration properties. Um, I have all my configuration properties in my settings PY folder. Um, I won't have time to go into all these configuration options in this video today, uh, maybe in another video. Uh, but you can see here that it's getting those configuration properties from the find my, find my hitman dot settings, which is this file here. And then we also have some other configuration options here too. So I have a salary PY folder inside my Django project, but as it stands, this will not work. So in order to get it to work with your Django project, you need to update your init PY as well. So what this means is that whenever you run the manage PY run server command, it will import the salary app as part of the server starting. So if you forget to do this, what will happen is that some people will experience this thing where they try and call a salary task and it appears that it's working, but it's not and the tasks never actually execute. And it gets stuck in this kind of limbo state where the thing just locks up and freezes and you might begin to see your uh, endpoints start the time out too, which isn't great. So just make sure that you're updating your init PY file to import the salary app. And that means whenever you start the Django project that the salary app will be included as part of that process. So that's just a, you know, a, a top tip that a lot of people would forget about. So if I go into the uh, salary uh, Docker file, I'm using Python 3.10 and we can see here that the Docker file is referred to here. So Docker salary worker Docker file which is this one that I just opened using Python 3.10. We're saying that this is a non-interactive environment. There's not gonna be a graphical user interface. We're installing some of the required dependencies for uh, compiling such as GCC and G++. Um, but the important part here is that, uh, so we're saying that we're gonna use the user root and we're also gonna create a, a user called salary and we're gonna add the user salary to a group called salary and we're also going to add the user salary to a group called root which will grant the salary user root privileges now it depends on what your salary workers are actually executing your salary worker might not need root privileges and might need uh, lower privileges um, uh, it's up to it just really depends what the salary workers are running essentially uh, so that's setting up the user for our salary worker. We go further down, there's slash user slash SRC slash app. So we're saying that whenever we're building this Docker image, inside the Docker image, it's gonna create this directory and then it's gonna copy the contents of this folder inside of this directory inside the Docker image. So this folder gets copied into this Docker image under this directory inside the Docker image. After that's been done, we can now interact with the contents of the folder, which we do here, run requirements.txt, and this will install 
all the uh, Python packages that we need, such as Django, Django REST framework, Celery, uh, Redis, and Celery Flower. There's also another one in here called Django Celery Beat, which is important to note. And Celery Beat is responsible for scheduling, and Django Celery Beat is a pip package that allows you to schedule tasks through your database that you're using on Django. And I'll I'll talk a bit more about the scheduling functionality within Celery uh, within Celery later. So that will install your dependencies. And then now we'll go into uh, this uh, further Celery setup. So we've got Celery D, Celery B, Celery B, which I previously mentioned. And then we also have a, a configuration file called Celery D. So this can be located here. So there's these two bash files, one called Celery B, one called Celery D. So Celery, Celery D is the Celery daemon. And what that means is a daemon is a program that runs in the background in a Linux environment. And the daemon will uh, allow Celery just to run in the background and it won't be the main process of your uh, terminal essentially. But the important thing to note is that uh, if you have a Celery task and it takes 10 seconds to run, but you wanna shut down your Celery worker, you do not want to immediately shut down that salary worker otherwise you'll lose that otherwise you'll use lose the task so if the if the task takes 10 seconds to execute but it's only five seconds through and you want to shut down your salary worker you'll lose that task and you'll lose that process and functionality um, and tasks will start to go missing and some of your users will start to complain that there's you know bugs within your system so you don't want that to happen. And what you actually want to happen is a thing called a graceful shutdown. So a graceful shutdown is essentially where you're waiting until the salary worker finishes executing the tasks that it's currently processing. And then the salary worker will shut down and I won't pick up any further tasks as well. I'll finish executing that 10 second long task and then shut down rather than shutting down halfway through processing that task. So it helps uh, reduce uh, task going missing. So this uh, salary daemon will Gris will allow you to start up a salary process and start up your salary worker on a machine and also gracefully shut it down uh, whenever necessary too and, I'll, and run your salary in the background. Now salary beat is responsible for, responsible for scheduling. So what scheduling means is you can define a salary task to execute at a specific time of the day. So for example, if you have users on your system, they're located geographically all around the world in different time zones, but you want each of your users to receive an email at midnight their time. So you wanna localize to their time zone. You can use Django Celery Beat to do that. So you can tell it to uh, send an email to all your users at at a time localized to their time zone and the salary workers can pick that up and process that and salary beat is responsible for handling that uh, uh, scheduling logic and we're using Django salary beat as our scheduling provider as well so we can add rows inside our database whenever we want to schedule more additional tasks which is really handy so if I have in my project a task like this one start new hit job if I want this task to execute at midnight every night, I can use Celery Beat to do that. And it, you know, it works really nicely with Django Celery Beat package as well. So this is for uh, starting a Celery Beat process and allowing you to execute those periodic tasks. And uh, we also have our configuration file, Celery D, which is located here too. So it's just defining uh, the name of the Celery app, where our uh, bin, the actual salary execution file is and we're also defining where our uh, project is going to be located within the docker image and we also can uh, define optional parameters so we're saying here that our scheduler is going to be Django salary beat which I've previously mentioned and you can define the user is going to be root or you can say that the user is going to be you know some custom user that you've created as part of your docker image setup and you can say that your salary um, uh, to also pick up 
uh, items from other queues so you can have multiple queues within your project. Salary is a default name for the default queue, but you can have other queues to route other tasks, which is uh, something I can talk about um, in the future. So that's the configuration around salary daemon and salary beat. After that has completed, uh, we are also going on to uh, the entry.sh file. So after this Docker image builds, so after all these commands run, the Docker image is built, and then the entry point will be defined as the, the bash program that will execute once the Docker image starts execution. So we can see that our, uh, uh, our entry.sh file is located here. And what's happening is that the flag set E is set, which means that if any errors execute that the bash program will halt execution rather than keep going onto the next program. It's just gonna CD inside the project, run any Django migrations that need execution. And then we're also gonna run our salary beat process, which we have previously set up as part of our Docker image. So if there's any scheduled tasks, it means that they can actually execute inside of this container. And we're saying that we're gonna run our salary app, find my hitman. We're gonna have a queue uh, called salary, uh, which is the default queue inside of salary. And this worker, this is the worker name. So the worker is called worker in this case, but this worker is gonna uh, look for items in the queue salary, which is the default queue and execute whatever gets put inside that queue and the log level is going to be info. The important thing to note here is the EXEC part at the start, which means that this command here will become the main uh, process of this Docker container. So me previously saying about the importance of a graceful shutdown and a salary worker, uh, that is only able to occur if you are doing this like EXEC part where it, because salary is now the main process, it grants salary the ability to shut down on its own timeline rather than on another program's timeline. So it will help you reduce the ability, will help you reduce the uh, probability of tasks going missing essentially. And that's, it's, it's good to have in a production environment. And then we also uh, uh, have that. So once this command runs, the salary worker will begin and then you'll see uh, inside your logs that this will appear here uh, and then you can see here that the queue is called salary and we have our tasks called uh, start new hit job so the worker has successfully detected it and I'll begin execution of those tasks and then also uh, we have our salary flower docker image too which is very similar um, and except the only difference is that it's running a flower server and it's exposed at port 555 but feel free to run this in your own time and it's also just important to note as well that um, this uh, all these docker containers have been networked together correctly some people experience connectivity issues between Celery and Redis for example uh, but if you have the network configuration set up properly it'll allow your containers to communicate between each other uh, so I'd recommend uh, checking that out um, but that's the that's the kind of uh, main things I wanted to cover around getting started with Celery and Docker. If you have any other questions, you know, feel free to comment below and I'll include links to this uh, GitHub repository, and you can get started using uh, Docker and Celery in your own time. Thanks.